Is this thing on? Good. So I've come here today because I found something very intriguing. I found these weird, weird creatures made of steel and wood. It was quite scary. Now, this is very important. You need to hear this. There's something unique about them. I can't explain what it is, but there's something unique with each and every one of the five. Now, I've highlighted five, and I've given all the information to my good friend, Coaster Chow. He can tell you exactly what you need to hear about these roller coasters. I think that's what they're called. Roller coasters. It's a weird name. I gotta go. I need to travel down to America to see what they're doing with Pantheon. I don't know why it hasn't opened yet, but there's this thing called COVID. I need to go. Coach Chow will give you all the information. I'm going to Bush Gardens Williamsburg. Over and out. Hello there ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, lads and lasses, and welcome to Coaster Channel, Doncaster Born, but built for theme park news! Yes, we're back! And uh, today, we're going to be doing a video that was suggested to me months and months and months ago, but I just haven't found the time to record it yet. Uh, but massive shout out to Z Suzanne Ka Cohen, I think that's how it's pronounced, Suzanne Cohen, um, for suggesting this video months and months ago. It's uh, Now, she said top 10, but I've managed to whittle it down to a top 5. This is the top 5 most intriguing roller coasters. So these are the designs that are the weirdest, they are the most unique, they are the most death defying, they're the most intense, they are the most eye catching, eye popping, hair curling, toe raising machines, I guess, in the world. Uh, so this video will be counting down the top five in my opinion, but if you have got any weird roller coasters that you've seen, tell me the names, tell me the park, don't share any links about it, and I'll be able to have a look for myself and maybe I'll do a part two. That's one and one, but it's two. And um, yeah, so this is just my top five, but I'll also share some of yours if you leave it in the comments down below. Uh, and I'll do part twos, part threes, part fours, part fives. Suzanne, you started a series. And for now, guys, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, click on the bell so you never miss a YouTube video. Massive shout outs to Brian Galeas and Falco Flair, as well as Suzanne Cohen once again for suggesting this video. If you've got any video suggestions, leave them in the comments down below. And I'll tell you at the end of the video about tomorrow's very exciting day, potentially. And for now, guys, let's get into this video and count down my top five most intriguing roller coasters. So at number five, we have Lost Coaster of Superstition Mountain. This is located at Indiana Beach in America. This is a Custom Coasters International Roller Coaster, a wooden roller coaster. Now this has a length of 1,400 feet, a height of 35 feet, a top speed of 20 miles per hour. It has an elevator lift system, and a little known fact about Superstition Mountain, it was originally an electrically powered dart ride built by Indiana Beach in 1978. For the 2002 season, the ride was renovated by CCI, Custom Coast International, and the ride uses an elevator lift rather than the cars being self-driven. So that's a very interesting fact there. And of course, the cars have a lid. The cars have a lid. It's like riding the Jungle Coaster at Legoland Winds all over again. Now, the Lost Coaster of Superstition Mountain has the interesting coaster layout with its wooden design and its CCI renovation back in 2002. But it's the cars that are the most intriguing part of the ride. The fact they have this lid on it, it's two cars attached together, and they've just got these lids on it. It's like concealed wagon cars uh, being rolled down side friction track. Uh, now, it's not self it's not side friction, of course, uh, but uh, of course the elevator lift system, you know, that's very unique. I've never I've really seen those on uh, wooden roller coasters or CCI renovation coasters uh, that were originally electronic powered dart rides. In fact, this might be the weirdest record ever. This is actually the world's first this is the world's first electrically driven dark car ride renovated into a CCI wooden coaster with an elevator lift. 
very specific record, but you can take it in Yellow Beach. You can take it. Uh, now, uh, this coaster, like I said, is very unique for those many different reasons. So, you know, it's not the most unique in the world, but I thought it was just specific reasons like the cars being with an enclosed lid, the elevator lift, the CCR renovation, the fact about it being an electrically powered dart ride at first in 1978. That's a lot of history, and uh, that's why it's at number five in my most intriguing roller coasters. Because I'm judging it on based on the Lost Coaster of Superstition Mountain, and not just the electronically driven dart ride, driven, driven dart ride that it was back in 1978. So that's at number five. Let's look at number four. So coming in at a very impressive number four, it is Battle of Jungle King, which sounds like a rebirth of a CITV show. Uh, now this is not a CITV show, this is located at High Fire Sunat Land. It is a broken rail coaster manufactured by Golden Horse, which is an Asian manufacturer. Now it has two sides, it has Tiger, which contains two inversions, and it has three inversions on the Dragon side, and of course the theming of it was created by Joravision. Now, Jurovision uh, Europe BV were the theming creators, and they're most known for other projects around the world. You know, they're doing the theming for Aqualantis and Abyssus at Energylandia, uh, which is opening next year in 2021, or it could open late 2020, we don't know yet. And um, yeah, basically, um, that's, you know, that's where the theme was created. But the most unique thing about this is the tilt track now of course like i said it's a it's a manufactured by golden horse it's a broken rail coaster clues in the name people clues in the name now the broken rail coaster the tilt elements you know it's, it's, it's a chilling coaster it's a chilling coaster uh tiger versus dragon and you know i think that uh, with both sides, especially when you get that dueling element, when both sides tilt at the same time. It's like I'm doing the reverse YMCA. But, when both sides tilt at the same time, it feels, it, it just feels unique and it feels a bit weird and a bit, um, you know, standout. So, you know, I think that it's definitely one of those roller coasters where... It, it, it has a bit of uniqueness to it, and it has that. It, it kind of stands out in my eyes as a as a unique design and a unique machine, uh, especially with the dueling tilt element. YMCA. <laughs> um, but yeah, it has that dueling tilt element, which makes it stand out. Uh, it gives it its broken rail coaster type. You know, it, it gives it the type really. And, um, you know, the rest of the layout isn't half bad from the looks of it. It just looks like your normal average thrill coaster layout. But, you know, I think that either way, it looks like a decent coaster. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a dream coaster. I would like to try it one day. Hopefully it doesn't get removed by the time I move to Asia uh, and do some Asian parks. But, you know, I think that, um, you know, this is definitely a unique coaster because of the tilt section. And it's got that uniqueness about it, especially when it does the dual tilt. Uh, so that's number four. Now let's move down to a closed coaster now at number three. So number three is Viper at Six Flags Great Adventure. This operated between 1995 and 2004. It's a Togo sit-down looping coaster with a length of 1,670 feet, a height of 88.6 feet, and two inversions in the duration of two minutes and 24 seconds. Now, of course, if you're wondering where this coaster is now, it's in the scrapyard, pretty much. But if you're wondering where the location is, Look at the station of El Toro. Can you guess it? It's the same station as Viper. That's right, Viper made way for the El Toro wooden roller coaster. So, uh, Viper closed in 2004. They brought in King Dakar. Uh, and in 2006, they brought in El Toro on the site of the Viper. So, uh, if you're wondering where Viper is in the site, look at El Toro. You're standing on it. Uh, now, the unique thing about this one is, now I've seen like Togo Ultra Twisters, I've seen them, they're not really unique in my opinion, they're, they're, they're weird, get them wrong, but I think that they're just like, you sort of get used to them now when you see a few of them that are popping up in the same kind of layout, but when you see a Togo sit down loop with a longer layout, with an extended capacity, and you see one that's a bit weird and has gone through mechanical breakdowns now and then, and, and pretty frequently, 
you see my point. You see, you see my point. Um, so this one in particular is an interesting one because uh, of the extended layout, the extended capacity, and the fact that it's different to many other different Togo sit-down loopers or ultra twisters, uh, as we call them specifically. And um, you know, this is different for many, many different reasons. And to be fair, you know, compared to the ultra twisters, this, uh, like I say, it's a bigger layout, but it's got. It's not like a proper Ultra Twister where it's got the, the proper Ultra Twister cars kind of. It's kind of a, a different design on those kind of cars. And it's got the it's got the, the circle kind of fencing, caging, I guess, uh, when it's going through like the inversions and stuff like that. But you know, I definitely think it's got some kind of edge to it that's different. But the uniqueness of it is the fact of the the look of it. It looks very unique and it looks very, you know, weird, like it shouldn't be in an alternate universe. Um, <laughs> maybe it belongs in uh, Broken Matt Hardy's Multivers, uh, for those of you who are wrestling fans. And, um, yeah, I think that, you know, Viper is definitely an interesting roller coaster. I think it definitely stands out. Uh, it stood the test of time as a good filler for El Toro. It stood the test of time for El Toro's replacement. And, uh, you know, I think that um, El Toro was a good replacement for Viper. I think that El Toro, from the looks of it and from the reviews it was getting, I think is definitely a good replacement. Many people have their other critics about El Toro, but, you know, oh, bygones be bygones, eh? So, um, yeah, that's Viper. Um, very different, very unique to the rest of the Togos, completely different to the Ultra Twister, and uh, has its own uniqueness about it. Let's move on to talking about number two, or DOS, for those of you who are Spanish viewers. So kicking down the coaster manufacturer doors at number two is our SNS Screaming Squirrel Coaster at Gardaland in Italy. It is Sequoia Adventure, now known as Sequoia Magic Loop. Now this has a height of 98.4 feet, uh, no recorded length according to the roller coaster database, with three inversions in a 1.25 duration, 1 minute 25 seconds. Now, of course, this was known as Sequoia Adventure first. It remained closed for the 2018 season, then reopened in 2019 with a brand new theme as well as the rename from Sequoia Adventure to Sequoia Magic Loop. Now, Sequoia Adventure slash Sequoia Magic Loop has its own uniqueness to it, and the uniqueness with this particular coaster is the inversions. The cars are fine. The cars look fine. Might paint them up a bit and make them less rusty, but apart from that, totally fine. It's the inversions that are the weird ones. It's the saxophone inversions. That, yeah, that's what they're called. Saxophones. Get the Blues Brothers in here. <laughs> and, uh, no, they're actually called saxophone inversions. If you look on the database, for those of you who are non-coaster fans, they're called saxophone inversions. Um, where's KSI with his saxophone? <laughs> um, hashtag sax guy. <laughs> uh, now, of course, these saxophone inversions, if you don't know what they are, they're quite, you know, they're really steep and they're like... Like I said, they're like the curves of a saxophone. You know, they're curling, they're curling, they're curling. Like a pinball machine. It's like you're painting a picture with a fluent, flamboyant paintbrush. And, um, yeah, it's definitely got that uniqueness to it. And that's one of the things that makes it more unique, is the fact that it has these saxophone inversions. And... You know, it's it's got the, if you want an edge, if you want the feeling of hanging off the edge of your seat and about to drop into a, into oblivion, hashtag Alton Towers, and um, if you want the feeling that you're about to you know, be flown out of your car, then this is the ride for you, because you're literally being hangover, and you literally go full over, so you're upside down, then you're right way up again, then you're upside down, then you're all the way up again, then you're upside down, and it's that continuing cycle until it gets to the bottom. Now, um, now like I said, this is definitely a brilliant, brilliant looking, looking coaster, I guess, uh, to some extent. Uh, what it's like to ride, uh, obviously I haven't experienced it for myself yet, so I don't know the feeling, but I think that other people may be quite, what's the word, hesitant to ride it again, that those have experienced it the first couple of times. Uh, and those of you who have ridden Sequoia Magic Loop or Sequoia Adventure, either one, can vouch for me on that one, from what I've seen from reviews. And um, yeah, this one's definitely an interesting one. Like I said, the uniqueness factor of it is the saxophone inversions and the, the design of it. But I think people would want to ride it once, then never ride it again. I think 
you know, I think if the if it stopped giving, but if it didn't stop giving bad rides, I think that ride would be at the center of an arson attack, a bit from an enthusiast because they want to burn that ride down. Um, but you know, it's still unique, and that's why it's at number two on my list. But now it's the big one after months and months and months. Well, not months, but you know nearly a year of waiting uh, um, we're going to uh, talk down number one on my most intriguing roller coasters list and let's talk about it right now it is the Intamin Space Diver so what do I say when I'm talking about the Intamin Space Diver I'm talking about Six Flags Magic Mountains flashback it was also known at other Six Flags parks as Z-Force uh, Great American over Georgia, I believe. Now, of course, this is an Intamin Space Diver, a long forgotten concept. Uh, this has a length of 1,900 feet. Uh, it has a height of 86 feet, a top speed of 35 miles per hour, as flashback. Um, built, it was built by Giovanola, but it was manufactured by Intamin. So they worked together on this, technically. So flashback was generally closed from May to September when the adjacent water park was open. Even outside of these times, the operation of Flashback was very, very sparse. Now, during the water park's 0304 off season, the Flashback never operated and it was demolished mid December 2007. So, Flashback, of course, like I said, it's an Intamin space diver. And this particular coaster is out of this world for all the wrong reasons, from what I've heard. Now, you're probably thinking, why is this your number one most intriguing coaster? It's intriguing for many different reasons. While there's one main reason for the rest of them, this has got a couple of main reasons. First of all, after reading that, it only operated when the water park wasn't open. And even during those times, it still operated very scarcely. That's that's very unique for something that was added. So, I, I, I mean, I guess it's definitely an interesting one. It's definitely an interesting uh, situation with that one. Uh, the second main reason is the design of the ride. The trains aren't the problem, the design pretty much is. Uh, now the design of it, it kind of, it's kind of like, it's like a 1980s Skyrocket 2. That's how I'd best describe it. Um, if you look at Electric Eel at SeaWorld San Diego, Superman Ultimate Flyer, Six Flags Discovery Kingdom, they are premier Skyrocket 2s. An 80s version, an 80s Intamin Giovanola combination version of that, and you get this creature of a human coaster. <laughs> now, um, the flashback, also known as Z-Force at Great America over Georgia, uh, and it's passed before finally destinating at Magic Mountain before its demolishment. Um, like I said, it's got those many different reasons why it's unique. It's got the design, it's got the, the off-peak operation and the on-peak non-operation times. Um, I figured that Intamin maybe took a gamble with this concept. I think it, I think manufacturally at the time, I think it was one of the more harder to operate in terms of maintenance costs, refixing it, continuously fixing it, and the, you know it, it just wasn't worth the time. So of course that's probably why they end up demolishing it in the end, uh, four years after never operating again. And um, you know, Flashback's just got that, again, it's got that edge of being on the edge of your seat, being flown off upside down. It's got that edge to it. It's got a bit of a uh, difference between this and the, the, the Screaming Squirrel coaster. And um, you know, I think uh, Flashback, to be fair, wouldn't look out of place in a smaller park. I think if they got it working to 100% all the time, then you'd probably see this in like your smaller parks in the countries, um, like the smallest UK parks, European parks, USA parks. This is something that you wouldn't find in a major, major theme park, in my opinion. So, you know, I think we're looking here at something that's a bit meh from what I've seen from reviews of this ride. And, um, you know, I think that Magic Mountain kind of took, uh, dodged a bullet. They, they dodged a bullet because from the sounds of it, it wasn't an enjoyable ride. It was very uncomfortable from what I heard. So, um, you know, kind of glad that this one is, you know, done over the hill, done finito. And, um, yeah, it's just those couple of reasons. The design of it, the non uh, the non-operation times and the operation times both on and off peak from the water park opening uh, that's very unique I've hardly it's rarely seen to be honest with coasters sometimes nowadays um, but a coast like that back in the day when it was operating at certain times and it was very very rarely operating at those times anyway that's very very scarce and very very rare 
uh, which is very unique to me personally. And, um, you know, I think that, again, like I said, Magic Mountain dodged a bullet with this one, so, uh, from the sounds of it, from the reviews it's been getting, so, um... You know, this is unique for many different reasons, and that's why it's at number one in my list. So there we go, guys. That is it from the top ten most intriguing... Co well, top five. Why am I saying top ten? So that is it from the top five most intriguing roller coasters. A big shout-out once again to Suzanne Cohen for suggesting this video. If you've got any video suggestions, leave them in the comments down below. Now, I spoke about something very exciting tomorrow. Six Flags 2021 announcements is scheduled to be made apparently tomorrow on August 27th. So, all my social medias will be open. They'll be completely open tomorrow. So, if you've got any leaks, if you've got any true, true leaks that you've found on the internet before I do, message me on all my social medias. They're all in the description down below. Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, they are all in there. Send them over. And uh, I can't wait to receive any leaks tomorrow, or even before tomorrow. If we've got any leaks, then obviously I'll do a video on them before tomorrow. And, um, yeah, tomorrow's going to be a big, big day. You know, y you remember this time last year? Do you remember this time last year when we uh, released loads of videos on the 6th Flags announcement of 2020? Which, of course, most turned out to be 2021 anyway now. Um, you know, so I think my expectations, to be honest, are, you know, half delayed attractions, half new attractions. So, uh, fingers crossed, we've got an announcement video coming. And obviously, like last year, we're going to be releasing all the separate videos out of the new attractions. Obviously, we've released videos already on the things like Jersey Devil, Tsunami Surge, V-Pair. We've released separate videos on them anyway. So, in terms of separate videos from the parks individually, in terms of trailers for their new attractions individually, as well as the whole announcement video, um, we're going to be just releasing the new attractions like Magic Mountain's Raptor, the Premier Coaster, the SNS Coaster, the other flat rides, the, the, the Screaming Swing and the Zampolo attractions. So any new attractions that aren't delayed from the previous year will be in separate video releases because the other ones are already released separately anyway. Um, and like I said, we're going to be releasing the announcement video as well. I'm going to be analysing all the attractions. And um, with that one, I'm just going to brush past the delayed ones and just focus on the new ones and, of course, analyse the coasters more in detail separately, uh, like we did with Jersey Devil and that last year. So uh, that'll be the plan for this year. Uh, but, yes, massive day tomorrow, guys. Make sure you stay tuned for all of that goodness. We are at 1,800 subscribers. I've just looked this morning, so thank you very much for that. And, um, yeah, very, very good milestone for the channel, and we're getting closer and closer to the 2K mark, so make sure we get there as quick as possible. Thank you very much, guys. I am Coast Child. Keep living the coast life, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for, hopefully, the Six Flags announcement day. Thank you very much. Take care, guys. Have an awesome week.